start of Holy Week. So we're remembering when Jesus arrived in Jerusalem and was greeted with shouts and praises from a crowd of people. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the large crowd shouted and pulled down branches from the trees to wave them with huge excitement. They put their coats like a red carpet on the road for Jesus so that they could honor him. And today is an opportunity for us to honor Jesus in our worship and in our thankfulness, like rolling out the red carpet. It was festival time, and as Jesus entered on a donkey, they were watching this special procession. Jesus looked like a king entering his city, but he didn't come with a big war horse or a chariot, but on a gentle, young donkey. He came with gentleness. Many years before this, their greatest kings had traveled on donkey. That's both King David and King Solomon. The Messiah was expected to be a descendant of David. This was how they might expect their Messiah, the anointed one, to ride triumphantly into the city. So no wonder they were excited. They were expecting the Messiah to come and rescue. So they shouted, Hosanna, which means save. Save me, please. It's also a word used in worshipful praise. So on this day, they were overflowing with joy and with hope in Jesus. He was surely there to save. I thought it might be quite good if we acted this out. I don't know if there's anyone who would be willing to be Jesus. Who do I pick? That's tricky. Can somebody else pick for me? Mary, would you pick Jesus? (laughs) There's a few arms up. Uh, No, they were going to ride on a donkey. Perfect, thank you. This is your donkey. Yes. So all, if you go down to the front, brilliant. So all of us are going to be the crowd, and we have our palm branches in the form of a palm cross. We probably have a coat on us today. If you have a coat or a cloak or something, you can get that ready because we're going to stand up in a minute and we're going to be the crowd. Um, If you want to, you could come down here and grab a ribbon to wave because that's pretty much like a palm branch to wave or you could just wave your cross. And as they come down, we're going to shout, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord or anything like that or hooray if it's easier. Hooray or yay, yeah, something like that, as we greet him as he comes in. And we remember that he came as king into his city. Okay, amazing. Everybody got everything they need? Got your coats ready? Because you're going to want to lay them on the road in front of Jesus. He comes on his donkey. Yeah? I want maximum participation here. (laughs) And you can ride in really slowly, Samuel. There's no rush because people want time to wave their branches and greet you. Sorry. Jesus, you can ride in very slowly on your donkey, but you can be greeted. Okay, are we ready? Excellent, let's do this then. Everybody up on your feet, and we're going to shout, Hosanna, Hosanna. Ready? Go for it. Hosanna! Oh, thank you so much for bringing that to life. I felt like we were there. That was amazing. And seeing him in that way would have reminded the people of the big promises of God. So many times before in their history, God had proved that he was a rescuer, a savior. The Passover rescue from Egypt would have been fresh in their minds because many were in the city to celebrate the annual Passover festival. I wonder if you can remember what that was all about. Many years before, their ancestors were rescued from slavery in Egypt. There had been plagues, and they had been protected when they covered the door frames with the blood of the lamb. When they tried to leave and escape from Pharaoh, they were pursued. But again, 
they were rescued through the miraculous crossing of the sea for safety. At the time when Jesus entered into Jerusalem, the country was occupied by the Romans and they were in charge and that was hard and people were expected to pay lots of taxes and they weren't free. They'd recently seen Jesus doing many healings and miracles and heard his amazing authority in his teaching. So perhaps God really was on the move. Maybe now was the time when he'd come to rescue and he'd put a new king on the throne. Could Jesus be the promised king of Israel? He was certainly at least a prophet. Was he the one they'd been waiting for? Their hope of being saved? Some were asking who he was. Who is this? Now that is a great question. Who is this? Ask yourself, who is Jesus? Is he more than a prophet? Is he more than a good teacher? Could he be the saviour, the servant king? Jesus knew that he was coming into Jerusalem with a mission to lay down his life for our forgiveness. Even as the people shouted joyfully, he would have known that human hearts change quickly and that he faced something extraordinarily difficult for him to do. He knew what was coming. On Thursday at his last supper, he'd tell his disciples how he had to go away from them. He'd already been warning them that he had to die and then rise. In less than a week's time from now, after this joyful entry into Jerusalem, Jesus would be put to death on a cross. And we'll remember each of these events this week during this coming Holy Week. So sadly, this joyful parade was also the beginning of Jesus' journey to the cross. And we can glimpse his glory coming as king on Palm Sunday and glimpse his glory all the way through the week. We'll see his amazing glory in different ways. He came as our humble king, gentle and glorious, and he knew he was going to need to die to give life to others. At Jesus' cross, we can know for certain that we are completely forgiven. He came to save all who would believe in him, and we're all invited to trust in him. He even held out forgiveness to the ones who were crucifying him. On the cross, he said, Father, forgive. It was finished. He took all the darkness, all our sinfulness, and overcame it all for us to make us friends with God, friends forever. Jesus suffered in many ways through the week ahead, through injustice, betrayals, the mocking and pain, and something far greater was happening than the crowds or the disciples could understand at first. This was God's plan to overcome evil. I hope that as we move through this coming week, through Holy Week, we're going to have time to soak in Jesus' story and let it speak to us really deeply of God's amazing love. Let's take time to meditate on God's love for the world. All around the world, Christians are remembering just like we are, journeying through the events from Palm Sunday to the cross and on to the resurrection. Jesus came as Messiah, as King, offering us union with God if we believe and follow him. We can turn from our sin and receive his loving acceptance. He wants us to enjoy a rich relationship with God. And the overflow of this relationship means we'll really want to put God's kingdom first. Jesus welcomes us into his kingdom. And we have the privilege of serving him. So extravagantly loved. In our APCM, we'll have the opportunity to look back and be really thankful to Father God for all that he's done and say thank you for one another. Let's remember how we've served God over the last year and the ways we've lived for his glory. We want to honour God for his faithfulness and to be thankful for others. We also look forward to trusting in the presence of God with us and his purposes. So let's travel through this coming Holy Week fixing our eyes on our humble servant, King Jesus. Verse 5 says, See, your king comes to you, gentle. Let's pray that Jesus would come to us in gentleness and glory, showing us his love, and be ready to welcome him, like those crowds welcomed him, to welcome him personally into our lives. Let's pray.
Lord Jesus, we thank you and we praise you for who you are, that you came knowing what you had to do, that you came and you gave everything for us, you gave your life. We praise you and we thank you and we love you because you alone are our hope. Amen. Let's stand to praise him, sing in Christ alone. <laughs>